Welcome back to This Week in Racing. Yes, I know it's been a while. I did not nail the work-life balance in the month of July, and that's on me. But what a time to come back, and what a week of racing to discuss, and specifically about my hat, because it didn't take too long for a McLaren IndyCar hat to come back in vogue. But we do have a couple of other things quickly to talk about before we talk about what is pretty much the major story of this IndyCar off season. And speaking of IndyCar, many of you will be very happy to understand and find out that Connor Daly will be making his return to the IndyCar series in an Andretti Autosport entry at Mazda Rera WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Sega. I still struggle with that from time to time. He'll be back with the Air Force sponsorship in a one-off effort that I'm sure not only Connor is hoping, but many of his fans are hoping can turn into something more solid for next year. We'll just have to kind of wait and see whether or not Air Force wants to pony up the money for Connor Daly to go full time. And it seems like you're not going to see the Earnhardt name in NASCAR very much anymore this season. Uh, Jeffrey Earnhardt has dumped his sponsor IK9 and will not appear at the Mid-Ohio round of the Xfinity Series. Now, this has kind of been a weird story to follow because there's been all sorts of sponsor drama related to IK9 uh, going back as far as I think May, uh, but for whatever reason, it's finally reached a breaking point with Jeffrey Earnhardt, and he will no longer drive with IK9 for Joe Gibbs Racing. Now, that doesn't mean that that car and that sponsor won't be at Mid-Ohio. In fact, Jack Hawksworth is going to get his NASCAR debut for Joe Gibbs Racing, and certainly he's going to be very interesting to watch as a GT driver and a former IndyCar driver, somebody who knows his way around right-handed turns, and it's always kind of fun that Joe Gibbs Racing is still willing to put in ringers for the road course races. But the big, huge, major, amazing story is that McLaren is indeed coming to IndyCar full-time in 2020. Now, it's a merge with Aero Schmidt peterson Motorsports, something I talked about literally a couple of days ago in the Silly Season video. It is indeed happening. Uh, it's going to be... Uh, Aero McLaren SP uh, is the team. It's a pretty long name, even longer than it already was. Uh, but Gilda Farron will be one of the major uh, parts of the management structure of this team. And probably the biggest news, if you can even say the biggest news out of something this big, is that they will be switching from Honda to Chevrolet Power. Now, before I talk a lot about all of the implications, and there are a lot of implications of this particular move, of this particular merger, of this particular team coming into this particular team and, and doing all this stuff, is that I, I need to applaud Zach Brown and McLaren uh, for learning from their mistakes. I said in the Silly Season video, I mean, it was a, it, it's a sanity prevails moment for them to decide to go full time. Because... They made so many mistakes going into last year's Indy 500 effort, or this year's Indy 500 effort, I guess we can say now. I mean, it, it, the program came together fairly late. They announced Fernando Alonso fairly late, and it just kind of rolled down the hill from there. I mean, they kind of flirted with the idea of going full-time. They couldn't go with Andretti because Honda didn't want them there, and Michael wasn't willing to switch from Honda because he wanted to keep Alexander Rossi. So then they had to figure out their own way to go. Well, they wanted a Chevy, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then it got to the point where the car wasn't painted the right color. They didn't have a steering wheel ready to go. Things like that, which ultimately led to Fernando Alonso getting bumped from the Indianapolis 500. This is almost completely the opposite situation. They've announced their intentions early, that they're going full-time. They're going with an established team in Aero Schmidt peterson Motorsports. And yes, yes, there is the joke that, yes, Schmidt peterson has a difficulty qualifying for the Indy 500 these days, too. But um, I think their combined efforts are going to be very well... Uh, I think this is going to be a very well-put-together operation. I'll just put it that way. Obviously, uh, Aero being a sponsor of both teams uh, helped this situation immensely. Um, obviously, you know when your primary sponsor is also your title sponsor of your team, in the case of Schmidt-Peterson Motorsports, uh, you'd hope that they would have a say. And certainly, Aero partnering up with McLaren 
uh, I'm sure smoothed over a lot of, of those ruts that could have been there. Again, getting this finalized by August is a huge deal because now they will be able to fully prepare, get everything ready to go, and you know they're going to have a couple of races going into the Indy 500 to get everything as a well-oiled machine. Now, certainly this means that McLaren is going to have a huge influence over what this team does from now on. And because of the Chevy switch, I think a lot of people immediately assumed that James Hinchcliffe was gone. That's not the case. James Hinchcliffe still has one year left on his contract, and based on his Twitter statement, he is going to be sticking with the team. So that means we've already got one of the two confirmed seats for the Aero Schmidt peterson team confirmed. It's going to be James Hinchcliffe. That's where all of the kind of certainty goes away. And I kind of said on Twitter, a bit hyperbolically, I even admitted that, is this, this is almost like setting off a nuclear bomb in the middle of, of, of IndyCar silly season. Because there are so many drivers and teams affected by this, the way this is all played out that I've got a list of things here, and hopefully I've been able to aggregate everything together so that you at least have a coherent picture of where everything seems to be headed, or at least some of the directions it could go. So Marcus Erickson put out a fairly not particularly positive uh, statement on Twitter. I mean, I'm not saying it was a negative or he was you know, really going after anybody, but it definitely seemed like Marcus Erickson is not going to be at Aero Schmidt Peterson Motorsports next year, or Aero McLaren SP. That's going to take some time to get used to. But, okay, so there's one seat available, essentially, at, at Aero Schmidt Peterson. Of course, we're going to put an asterisk next to that for another driver. But, uh, so, for all intents and purposes, the full time seat, there's one left because Marcus Erickson is gone. Now, Marcus Erickson is a funded driver. Now, considering that McLaren is coming in and essentially bought everybody's contracts, they're not hard up for cash. And in fact, I think Connor Daly was the one who said that, that, that McLaren brought enough budget to do an entire season for their Indy 500 effort this year. So that they're not strapped for cash. They're, there's, money is clearly no issue here. So a funded driver like Marcus Erickson, uh, I guess, didn't have a place in this equation anymore. Where could he go? I think uh, I think Carlin. I, I really do. I think Carlin's like we need money, and Marcus Erickson is like I have money. I think that's where he would go, assuming he stays in IndyCar. He could very well go to Formula E or WEC or something like that. Robert Wickens. Uh, there was some question of whether or not his deal would be honored, whereas once he gets healthy enough to drive race cars again, uh, Schmidt Peterson was going to provide him a car. Zach Brown has said he will absolutely honor that commitment to Robert Wickens. So. There you go. There's another driver potentially once things uh, you know work out for Robert Wickens. There's another driver that can go into that team. We go on to this is a really interesting thing. Is Meyer Shank Racing? Now we know that they are currently in a technical alliance with Schmidt Peterson Motorsports. They just had a sponsor re up for next season with Auto Nation. They looked pretty well set. They are also significantly associated with Honda over on the IMSA side of things in GTD. I would not expect them to leave Honda. So that probably means they have to leave the technical alliance with Aero, SPM, McLaren. So where do where does Meyer Shank Racing go? Well, there's a couple of possibilities. We've heard that uh, Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan is looking to expand. Could that possibly be a place where Jack Harvey could land? Maybe even something like a Ganassi, where you know they only have two cars and they are a Honda team, uh, very uh, solidly within that, uh, I guess you could say, hierarchy at, at Honda. So if Honda really wants to take care of uh, Meyer Shank Racing, that's probably where they'll end up sending uh, my, or, well, they'll, where they'll end up sending Meyer Shank. Easy for me to say. So one of those two teams. So then we really talk about the meme. And that is Fernando Alonso. So Racer reported that, yes, they are open to expanding to three cars to bring Alonso in for the full season. We know Alonso is a free agent to a certain extent. He is a contract. He's still a contracted McLaren driver, but who knows how long that contract is going to go. Um, whether they need to renegotiate this winter to see what's going to happen. And and then there is always the question, too, is Alonso motivated enough to do a full season of IndyCar racing? 
Regardless of all of this, I think this seat, the third Aero Schmidt Peterson, is absolutely a lock for the Indy 500 for Fernando Alonso next year. I wouldn't see him going someplace else. I know some people were suggesting a possibility of him going to like a fourth Penske or something in the Indy 500. I don't think that's even remotely possible. I think if Fernando Alonso is in the Indy 500, it's going to be in that third Aero Schmidt Peterson team. So what of the second car, which is almost certainly going to be vacated by Marcus Erickson? Well, as I talked about in my Silly Season video, reported by the Indy Star, Jim Aiello, they are actively pursuing Colton Herta. Now, here's the, again, kind of the thing that, that would that would be a whole other set of dominoes that would go down. Because if, for, if they buy out Colton Herta for the second car to partner with James Hinchcliffe, that means that Andretti's got essentially a seat open at the Harding Steinbrenner team. Who do they put in there? Do they put in Oliver Askew or do they put Connor Daly in? Do they move Marco around? What do they do? There's a lot of possibilities there. So let's assume, and because money is no object, it seems, or not a very uh, concern, not a big concern for McLaren, I would say that the possibility of them buying out Michael's contract with Herta, unless Michael really wants to pay the man for uh, with Colton, uh, I, I would almost make an assumption that that's what they're going to go with. If they can get Colton, they're probably going to get him. If they can't. Um, this was something I failed to mention in my uh, Silly Season video, but they have been testing Felipe Nazar, who is a driver, Brazilian, formerly in Formula One, a former Sauber driver, uh, who currently races uh, in Action Express Racing in the Cadillac DPI. Now, Nazar is, you know, he's a really strong driver, and he's only developed since he left F1 and moved into IMSA. Now, Schmidt tested him. Was that fully a Schmidt deal? Was that Sam kind of saying, well, if this McLaren deal doesn't work out, maybe we'll go with Felipe? Or was this Zach Brown saying, hey, will you test that guy? Let's see if he's a possibility to go into our seat for next year. I don't know. I think I think Nasser or uh, Herta would be both be great choices. Um, I think there would be a little bit of a learning curve. Not not a huge amount of learning curve for Nasser, considering he would be a rookie. Colton would be in his second season. Speaking of American drivers in their second season, how about we throw out Santino Ferrucci as a possibility? Now, there was an article published on Racer.com that said, hey, Santino Ferrucci may be a free agent next year. Who knows? Uh, it was a little bit vague, no doubt about it, but is there a possibility that Santino could be on the radar for McLaren SPM? Um that would be a bit of a head scratcher. I mean, if they're willing to pay him, I think certainly. I think you, if you're Santino, you you go take the paycheck. But um, I don't see Dale. Like I said, I don't see Dale letting go of Santino. I think he's been a diamond in the rough for that team. But um, again, his performances have been very very good. Uh, looks like there's a lot of promise in that driver. So who knows? And then we kind of get to the thing that that's probably the of, of least importance right now but i figure i mention it anyway what happens with the traditional extra indy 500 entry for uh Aero schmidt peterson uh does that stay does that become a fourth entry because we i would make the assumption that fernando is going to be the third aero spm entry is that going to be uh, a, a third full-time car or is that just going to be okay he's taking the oriel servia seat because it in the past, we've seen Oriol Servia and Jay Howard and a few other kind of journeyman drivers uh, scrape together some funding and be able to put a third aero car on the grid. What happens now? Does that mean they would be open to, you know, it, let's say Oriol Servia finds the money again or Jay Howard finds the money again? Would, would Schmidt McLaren be willing to uh, put together another car for that driver or would they say, look, we got enough money, take a hike, go someplace else. I'm sure Hunkos would want your money. Uh, that's a possibility. I don't know. Again, it's probably way too early to be talking Indy 500 entry list implications from this. But um, as you can see, uh, we're just scratching the surface now and we're looking at, uh, I mean, I didn't even mention Nicholas Latifi. I mean, that's another thing that a lot of people keep throwing at me and saying, oh, hey, you know, motorsport.com is saying uh, maybe Latifi. I don't know. Uh, I, I remember him being brought up last year uh, as a possibility for a McLaren IndyCar drive. Um, but again, I mean, he's, hey, hasn't tested. It would be weird to see, uh, would be weird to see a, a, an F2 guy 
I mean, but then again, it's the Santino Ferrucci thing, isn't it? Just pulling a random F2 driver in and saying, all right, drive an IndyCar now. And, and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. So, yeah, yeah. Lots of possibilities, lots of possibilities with this. So, I'm sure you already have, but let me know down in the comment section below what you make of any and all of this McLaren, Schmidt, Hinch, Alonso, everybody news. Uh, and it's obviously going to continue to break, and we'll continue to talk about it as things develop. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Stay tuned for more IndyCar and This Week in Racing. We'll be seeing you in the next video.